Hi, everybody. Welcome into our Click2Houston.com Digital Center. This is View from the Dugout, something we started with the ALDS with the Astros, continuing on now, ALCS. Uh, this is our pregame show live from Ch KPRC Channel 2 inside the Digital Center. Randy McAvoy alongside longtime Astro, longtime Astros manager Larry Durker. Good to see you. You're with us in game three of the Cleveland series, and you're back now for the first time yeah, in the ALCS. Yeah, I worked it one time. It was fun. You know, I moved right uh, Kevin Bass in from the bench. He's That's always right. a good pinch hitter, switch hitter. It did a good job, I Yeah, hear. last couple of games, Kevin yeah. Bass was in here, did a nice job. Art Howe will be here uh, tomorrow, but uh, tonight it's all about game four. We'll be with you for the next 10 minutes or so to kind of count mm -hmm. down uh, to game number four at Minute Maid Park. I just got back from Minute Maid Park. I was there live at 5 and 6 o'clock, made it back to the studio as we uh, bring you the pregame. Larry and I will also check in after the third inning and after the sixth inning as well. You'll see that. And then our postgame show, I know it's a late start tonight, but hopefully it'll be a quick game tonight. That's what I'm hoping the post for. Post-game show is always a lot more fun if you win. That's right. We'll find out here in maybe three hours when this game ends tonight, but uh, keep it locked in right here. View from the dugout live uh, as well. Uh, coming up here on Facebook Live and click to Houston.com. Now, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, fire away. We're going to do our best to read them here. Matter of fact, we see ourselves right here. We're off and running. <laughs> and uh, the viewer count is increasing by the second now. So let's talk about this series, Larry. It's, it's a, a situation the Astros aren't used to being in. They've lost two games in a row, something they hadn't done since August. And That's it, how steady they were. Really, uh, it, it, it tips everything upside down when you get into the playoffs. For one thing, yep. the Astros have been very good in the playoffs at home, but they weren't that good during the season at home until the very end. Right. And then they got pretty hot here. Now you feel like you're kind of backed up down two to one, but there's still time. You, you just never know what are, what's going to happen. Uh, I think the most interesting thing is that uh, that A.J. Hinch has put uh, Bregman in the leadoff spot and, and brought Springer in behind him because they want Alex to have some pitches to hit. Uh, I know what it's like pitching in that kind of situation because it's kind of hard to pitch around a guy that won't swing unless you throw him a strike. Right. And, and he's walked if, a bunch if, so far. If they far, keep pitching around him, he'll walk, and then Springer will be up. So, but so if they're afraid Hinch, of Springer, they'll pitch to him, and he'll hit. So this was Hinch forcing the issue that, hey, you're not going to pitch around this guy anymore. you got to pitch It is. And, you know, you're, you're getting down to short strokes now. During the course of the regular season, you might be willing to settle on a lineup. But at this point, um, Uli is not really swinging the bat that well, despite the home run. Um, Runners in scoring I, position has not been good for him. Right. And so, well, all year long it was. Yeah. But, you know, in the postseason, you know, everything is, is just, it tightens down. And you have off days, which mm -hmm. means you don't need your whole bullpen. And so you see starters in the bullpen. So what looked like maybe weak bullpen for Boston, the next thing you know, Porcello, mm -hmm. who's starting tonight, pitches a scoreless eighth right. up in Boston. Last year, Astros were, uh, starters pitch in relief and helped a lot. So... This playoffs, it's a different animal. All right, I want to ask you because there's a lot of a lot of chatter. I just got back from the ballpark and, and this pitching matchup, there's a lot of concern from Astros Nation. And if you're watching, you have a question, again, fire your question off and we'll uh, keep an eye on it and do our best to answer it. Charlie Morton, great season. He was, what, 15 and three. He hasn't pitched, though, in a few weeks. As a former manager, you've been in a position, they obviously feel good that he can go out there tonight, but is, is there and should there be a concern of maybe some rust? I don't know. Uh, from my experience, uh, if my arm was healthy, you know, it wasn't always healthy, but when it was, um, I would feel like if I hadn't pitched very many innings for a long time, right. that I'd almost have to back off a little bit and concentrate more on control mm -hmm. than on stuff. Because if you get all amped up because of the, the, the importance of this game, and your arm feels good, you're not able to scatter the ball everywhere. And it's really important to throw strikes. His stuff has got so much movement that even, you know, if he feels good, even if he backs off 5% and throws strikes, it's still going to be nasty stuff. Yeah. So I'm a little worried about him, but I also think he'd go right out there and start throwing zeros on the board. So we got a question from uh, Danny uh, Arellano. I hope I said that right, Danny. Uh, following up on Charlie, how do you think Charlie will do tonight? Will he go seven innings? So that's the question. What does Hinch want out of him tonight? Does he want four innings, five innings, or if he's just, I mean, can he come back after layoff and go seven innings? Center? Well, he's got, you know, he, he's got everyone available to pitch out of the bullpen. 
Uh, I don't think he is really expecting seven innings from Charlie. I think he'd be happy with five. Mm -hmm. um, as an old school kind of guy, I'm always thinking he could get an extra inning out of just about everybody, the starters. Right. When he brings in a reliever and he has an easy inning, I think he could get another inning out of them. But that's not the way they do things these days. And obviously the way they do things has been working pretty well. All right, so Charlie Morton will get to start tonight uh, opposite Rick uh, Porcello. What, what, do you, what do you know about his game? And we saw him a little bit in that relief stint, but a 17-game winner this year. And, and I saw him uh, a little bit in, the, in that series against the Yankees. Uh, he made a start there, so I saw him for more innings. I know uh, he was a Cy Young winner. What I saw against the Yankees was nothing special. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked like he liked to throw his fastball up in the zone. A lot of pitchers do that now because all the hitters are swinging up, trying to hit home runs, and, and you can take advantage of that if you can get the ball up and in. But he was throwing 92. His breaking ball looked good, not great. Uh, he looked hittable, but the Yankees didn't hit him. Yeah. So, you know, obviously with 17 wins, a lot of teams didn't hit him. Yeah. You got another question now. Cliff Dowden, uh, back to Bregman, is moving Bregg to the leadoff a panic move? You just kind of talked about the, you just want this uh, guy to get some pitches to hit her, right? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't think uh, anybody performs better in panic mode. So I wouldn't call it that. I would just call mm -hmm. it a strategic move. Mm -hmm. uh, it increases your opportunity mm -hmm. for offense, at least in terms of get on and score for Bregman. Uh, it may give uh, Springer some chances to drive in runs, but the offset is the end of the lineup may not be as strong as it was with, with Bregman further down at the beginning. So, yeah. you know, you'd like to think that the guys that are batting eighth and ninth can get on so that Bregman can come up with men on base. But this move is probably designed more just to get pitches to hit for Bregman. All right, so Bregman will lead off. You got Altuve in the DH role again. And I guess this whole situation with his knee yesterday and today has been in the DH spot. Marvin Gonzalez is going to play second base, but it's not keeping Altuve out of that lineup. Well, it's impossible to keep him out of the yeah. lineup, and you couldn't blow him out of there with dynamite right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, uh, the, the knee injury that bothered him uh, during the middle of the summer, maybe a little bit towards the second half, got better, but it didn't go completely well. Right. I expect that uh, however long the Astros go in this postseason, that they're going to give that a good look over the winter and see if they can do something to clean it up, clear it up, and get it strong before next spring. All right, so uh, the bottom of the lineup did not perform well uh, last night. You got uh, Kemp out there in left field again tonight. Uh, I don't have the exact order in front of me, but uh, you know he's sticking basically with the same lineup minus the, the, the change with Brady. Yeah, pretty so. much. You know, the thing that probably stands out more for me is, uh, is uh, letting Jackie Bradley Jr. drive in five runs against you. You know, this is a guy that's probably their weakest hitter. Yeah. And the Astros Last have... Last two games, he's owned them. Yeah, he's, they're getting behind the count against mm -hmm. him for one thing. And, and mm -hmm. then, you know, almost anybody in the major leagues, if you get behind in the count and throw him a fastball down the middle, they're going to hit it. So mm -hmm. I don't think they pitched him as well as they could have. And obviously now they know they need to. All right. Uh, they're going to get started around 739 tonight. That's first pitch. Uh, Morton against Porcello in game number four for the uh, Astros. Uh, what was it like? And I think to, again, I want to mention again, everybody tune in. If you have a question, this is your chance to ask some questions. We've got a few of them already. A lot of let's go Astros. That's awesome. But if you have yeah. a specific <laughs> question about game four, Hey, this is a great way to kind of get you ready for game four tonight at Minute Maid Park. They'll get underway here in about uh, six, seven minutes, and we'll stay on for a few more minutes to, to get you ready. You've been a manager in the playoffs. It's a lot of strategic moves. And it, it, do you, is that where you really st take a step back and stick to what got you there as opposed to making just crazy amount of moves? Well, yeah, I would think so. But uh, you have to remember that the teams I had uh, won the division, so we weren't in the wild card. Right. But every time uh, we got into the playoffs, we either faced the, the Braves staff or that one year we faced the Padres and, and Kevin Brown beat Randy Johnson and that kind of set up a win for the Padres. So I wasn't particularly successful in postseason. But one thing I, I really don't think you, you want to do is, well, two things. One is talk too much mm -hmm. and act like you can talk the team into a win because you're not yourself. Right. And the other thing is, 
play the game strategically in a way that you didn't play it during the normal season. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to have uh, the image for your players that you're confident, that we're not freaking out, that we're not putting any extra pressure on any one person, uh, that we're just a team that won over 100 games and set a team record, and we can win this game tonight. So, yeah, yeah. I, I really don't think you change too much. It's too late. I mean, you get a win tonight, series is even, you know yeah. you're going back to Boston, mm -hmm. then you then you get the, the, the pivotal game five tomorrow because somebody's going yeah. back to Boston, in well, that case, up 3-2. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes seven. Um, yeah. I think you would have two teams with this quality. That's probably the most likely scenario. Mm -hmm. But obviously the Astros beat the, the Red Sox in four out of five last year. So they didn't have to go to game five. They had to go to seven with the Yankees. They had to go to seven with the Dodgers. That's probably the way it plays out. But, you yeah. know, I wouldn't stake my life on it because baseball is very unpredictable. Absolutely. Hey, I want to ask you, because it got so much attention last night when the story broke and then today at the ballpark, MLB has come out, made the statement regarding the stealing of signs, accusations, and clear the Astros. Uh, Red Sox uh, a year ago were caught doing that using an Apple Watch and fined over $100,000, turned by the Yankees. What is your thought of a guy that's been around baseball for so many years? Uh, uh, is it league-wide? Is it an issue that needs to be addressed? What do you think? I don't know because I don't know what they're stealing. Uh, yeah. If they're stealing the third bases, coach, coaches' signs, I'm not sure what I do. But I know if I'm pitching mm -hmm. and they're stealing the catcher signs, um, what I did every time I pitched is something that they couldn't steal. Mm -hmm. You know, if the if the makes it if the, up. If make, the, it no, make it difficult. Make it difficult. If the catcher gave me number one, and after a while they realized that number one was a fastball, mm -hmm. I'd go two, three, and I start. And I start winding up. So, mm -hmm. or I'd go down to my leg and I would subtract four, three, I'd be back to a slider, add one, it's a curveball, subtract one, it's a changeup. Okay. In other words, I was giving the final sign and yeah. I was giving it right as I started winding up. So it would be too late to, to, to transfer the sign, even if you had it. So you'd make that adjustment. So but the third base coach can't do that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So do you think with with the way uh, you know technology is now, a lot of, a lot of teams are finding ways to to, sure. to pick that up and. You know, uh, one of the things that's uh, been interesting about baseball from the very start, you know, in the beginning, the pitchers were rubbing the ball in dirt and grass. They were throwing spitballs. Uh -huh. uh, they started outlawing uh, pitchers uh, doing things to the baseball. Uh, they, they've tried to prevent guys from cheating in one way or another, but I saw a pitcher this year uh, stepping up just three or four inches in front of the pitching rubber instead of pitching off of it yeah. and to get that little advantage. Um, <laughs> I think one of the old sports writers said something like, uh, baseball has been agreeably free of chivalry. <laughs> the rule is if you can get away with it, do it. You do it, yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely. All right, uh, we're about two minutes away from first pitch. We appreciate you hanging out. There's one other question we'll get in. If the uh, question with Altuve's knee situation if it's late in the game, say he's on base and it's a one run game, whatever the situation might be, would they consider the way he's getting around, perhaps like pinch running for him just to, to cause he's not moving around very well. I would uh, consider his health to be more important than winning the series. Mm -hmm. You just sign him for about 10 years. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna tell him to go out there with all that adrenaline and try to score a run and stretch, stretch himself out and he, suffers an injury that's going to affect the last nine years of that contract, it's not very Taking smart. A chance, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out tonight. Again, Astros and Red Sox game number four, 2-1 series lead for Boston. Larry and I are here all night. We'll be checking in with a couple updates after the third inning, again after the sixth inning, and uh, he'll weigh in on what he's seeing from an analyst point of view. And, of course, right when this game ends, moments uh, after it ends, we'll be live again on a post-game show to kind of wrap up the night and hopefully talk about an Astros victory. We appreciate you checking in. Appreciate the questions. Again, we'll be live on Facebook Live again after the show. Our in-game stuff will be taped and uh, put all over social media as well for you to check out uh, if you're interested in uh, hearing what uh, Larry and I have to say about game number four. So we'll see you shortly and throughout the game, post-game, game number four, ALCS from Minute Maid Park. See you soon.